Welcome, I'm Dr. Janine Baring, naturopathic doctor, and today I have a caution. Don't take these supplement ingredients, and today I'm talking about flow enhancers and lubricants that are commonly found in most vitamin and supplement products on the market. And what they do is they actually are used to prevent the clumping and the sticking of those raw materials, those vitamins, even the herbal medicines, probiotics, and preventing that stickiness of those raw materials on the machinery so that it can get into the capsules or a tablet so much more quickly. So the industry saves a lot of money in terms of production times by using these flow enhancers and lubricants. But the question is, how about the safety for you? You're ingesting these. You probably didn't even know that you're ingesting these. And I'm going to show you some of the most commonly used flow agents and these lubricants that are used in the industry. And maybe, you know, some of those reasons why you may think twice now about actually ingesting them now that you know. So let's start with magnesium stearate. So this is one of the most commonly used excipients found in both pharmaceuticals but in nutraceuticals as well so i want you to look on your vitamin labels the non-medicinal ingredients it'll say right on your label and look for this ingredient so the magnesium stearate is i'm gonna tell you it's in most of the supplements on the market and sometimes it will say vegetable magnesium stearate and again it is a chemical so as much as it may sound natural it is a chemical it helps to coat and go on top of those raw materials so whether that's probiotics it could be your vitamins your minerals your herbal supplements and that flowing on the machinery allows for the speeding up of the production time so it's saving the company money now you'll see it's a very white powder and seems pretty inert that it wouldn't cause much of a problem but I'm going to show you now in a demonstration that I did earlier in my show on the Dr. Janine show exactly why maybe you would think twice about actually ingesting the magnesium stearate because of not only safety concerns but also for the fact that it decreases the absorption of the nutrients that it goes on so let's take a look at that now Here's the thing about the magnesium stearate. So if you were to go and check the material data safety sheet for magnesium stearate, it actually says that I need to be wearing gloves just to handle it. So imagine you're ingesting this in small amounts in your vitamins and your minerals and in your, your herbal supplements. The material data safety sheet for this commonly used household cleaner is very similar to that of magnesium stearate. So just to give sort of a perspective in terms of, you know, safety, in my mind, safety concerns potentially with, you know, taking something like this. Okay, so we know in our, you know, grade school, maybe high school, the whole acid plus a base. So here I have some vinegar and I also have some baking soda. So we know what's gonna happen here. You know, the acid and the base combination, we have the whole volcano situation happening and that's exactly what I would expect with the baking soda with the vinegar. So that's normal. Now, what I've done here is I still have that baking soda but in order and we know that baking soda is a little bit sticky it's very difficult to get into the capsule so imagine this is a vitamin in this case it is our baking soda but I've used a little bit of that magnesium stearate so again this is the flow agent that's commonly found in most of the supplements out there so I've used a bit of the magnesium stearate mix that with my baking soda to make it more of a lubricant. It's more lubricated, it's slippy and slidey, and it got into the capsule so much easier than if I were just to try to get it in um, on its own. So again, this is just baking soda, a little bit of that magnesium stearate, and I have vinegar. So again, baking soda plus vinegar, you would expect the same type of chemical reaction to happen. But when I open this up now, you can see that because the baking soda is coated with the magnesium stearate, we don't get the same kind of chemical reaction. So that's because now it's coated. So that magnesium stearate has done its beautiful job of coating you know, that, that uh, ingredient. 
But the same is true in the vitamins, and that's why now the baking soda, you're not getting the same type of chemical reaction because it's coated with a magnesium stearate. So the question is, for supplements that contain, you know, the, the magnesium stearate, how well are they actually absorbed? If they are coated with magnesium stearate, how well is your body actually absorbing these nutrients? And that's, that's the question that I ask you. So when people say that vitamins don't work, this is one of the reasons that potentially you're not absorbing and you're not getting the full, you know, the goodness out of the vitamins and the supplements that you're taking because they contain the magnesium stearate. So just food for thought. So now you can see in that demonstration exactly why you may not want to take magnesium stearate in your supplements, rapidly, you know, decreasing that absorption of whatever it goes on top of. And, you know, it's a question as to the safety as well in terms of consuming that magnesium stearate. Another commonly used flow agent and desiccant is silicon dioxide. So this is another thing that I want you to look for on your vitamin labels. And you may be familiar with another form of the silicon dioxide for, you know, if you're buying new shoes or electronics. And sometimes you'll find these little desiccant packs even in vitamin bottles themselves. And it says right on the pack, do not eat, so do not consume. And this is what it looks like when you open up those packets and it's, it's used to help to absorb moisture. But when it now is used in terms of ingestion in supplements and in vitamins, it's powdered down and often can be a nanoparticle, which can be very damaging to ecosystems and question as to you know the safety of this in terms of ingesting this. And it's also used as an anti-caking agent. It helps to thicken. It also helps with preserving shelf life and can help to carry flavors in different, you know, natural products, even though in my opinion, it's not that natural. Now, silica does exist in nature and this is part of the earth's crust. So that's very different from the chemical form of the silicon dioxide. So there, it has been shown that the silicon dioxide, if it's inhaled, has been shown to cause autoimmune dysfunction and also has been linked to lung cancer. So Again, you have to do your due diligence. You have to make those choices for yourself in terms of what you choose to consume and put in your body, and maybe you didn't know. So that's why I really want you to check your vitamin labels for these ingredients. Now, a sister or a cousin to the silicon dioxide is titanium dioxide. And this is also known as TI, O2, so that's the chemical nomenclature, so titanium dioxide, two oxygens, is also known as E171 or titanium white, and this is a common whitening agent. It's also found not just in supplements and pharmaceuticals, but it's also found in processed foods and a lot of natural foods. So this is something that you definitely want to look for. Now, this can be found in things like paints, but also in plastics, in rubber, in printing ink, also in paper and wax paper, cosmetics will have the titanium dioxide, sunscreen, so you have to look for it here, especially in the nanoparticles, which can be very damaging, again, not only to humans, but to ecosystems and the oceans as well. Titanium dioxide is also commonly found in coffee creamers, also cakes and other baked goods, and of course, in vitamins and supplements. So something to look for, it has been shown to be a potential carcinogen to humans and some rat studies have been done and have shown that the inhalation of this when it's an ultra fine powder of the titanium dioxide can cause respiratory tract cancers so something that you definitely want to do your due diligence and make sure that you're looking for this ingredient and this has actually been banned in France as of January 2020 and now more recently as of May 2021 the EU has unanimously made the decision to ban the use of titanium dioxide 
in Europe. So this is something that it's going to be phased out in the next few years. And in studies, this is what's so concerning. So one study showed that the titanium dioxide and the activity of zinc peroxide, that combination, especially as nanoparticles, had effects on DNA damage. So that's pretty frightening. Anything that messes with our DNA is, you know, not a good thing for our health, in my opinion, of course, as well as causing inflammation in this study in the small intestine. So this is, you know, a warning that the accumulation of the titanium dioxide inside the intestinal cells, especially in the lymphoid-rich pears patches, which is part of our immunity in the digestive tract, might lead to damaging outcomes such as inflammation and could be involved in the pathogenesis of inflammatory bowel disease. So again, really important that we are paying attention to what, and especially if you have an inflammatory bowel condition, and let's say you're taking a herbal medicine, you're taking a supplement, you're taking L-glutamine, something to help your gut, and yet it has these inflammation-causing ingredients like the titanium dioxide, the silicon dioxide, the magnesium stearate, within the supplement itself, this could be working backwards in terms of helping you with your own digestive health amongst other, you know, things that you may be working on with your health and you're trying to take supplements to make yourself feel better. Now, another ingredient is talc. So this is known as magnesium silicate. It is carcinogenic and if inhaled or they found in intravenous talc exposure, that that really increases the risk of pulmonary, so lung toxicity and and the use of talc should be strictly avoided in supplements, of course. So this is something that over the years in the cosmetic industries, talc has definitely been removed, and but still you're gonna find it in some beauty products. And the topical exposure to talc has been linked to a lot of serious health concerns as well. So that's definitely something that you don't wanna be ingesting and look for this on your labels as well. Another ingredient is PEG. So this has been in the news a little bit, it. This is found in other formats, injectables, and it's called polyethylene glycol. So something definitely you do not want to be ingesting in your supplements and in your vitamins, which are supposed to be natural. So I hope that you learned something new. Please do, if you have a question or a comment, do put it in the question and comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Also be sure to share this video with someone that you know will benefit from this information. Maybe it's that person that you know who takes a ton of supplements. They really do need to start looking at their vitamin labels and really being aware of what they're ingesting in those vitamins. I appreciate a big thumbs up and if you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe. Also click that bell for all notifications so that you always get my newest and latest uploads which happens every single day of the week. And remember to always take good care of your health and do it naturally. Thanks for watching today.